Good evening and welcome to Law Talk, the show that brings the Constitution, the, the events of today into your life, defined and explained by two prominent attorneys, and that would be Mark Malakowski and myself, James Barrett. Mark, what are we covering tonight? Well, we had an incident where we had a company that apparently wasn't too big to fail. Which company was that, Mark? It was Hostess. Hostess. Well, we're talking ding-dongs, ho-hos, and Wonder Bread. Twinkies. Oh, I can't forget the Twinkies. And no more Twinkie defense. No more Twinkie defense. And so, yeah, I mean, we're talking about an American icon that's been in business for, for decades. Uh, 100 years, I understand. And 36 plants, uh, 18,500 workers, right. all now going to be laid off. And why is that? Well, there's a bankruptcy judge, a Robert Drain. He was trying to uh, facilitate a mediation between the union and Hostess. Uh, I think it was November 9th. The union went on strike, and Hostess said, "You know, we we, we can't we can't give up anymore." And uh, Hostess was crippled, and it could meet its obligations. Well, it's been in bankruptcy for a while. Okay. So it's had well, some financial that, problems yeah, for a while. I, I, I have been following this, and what's really going on here is this. Uh, there's two opposing sides. They, they try to do secret mediation uh, between some of the top, top people on both sides, both the company and the union side. And the judge had actually wanted that because they didn't want any mediation in the press. They actually wanted them to really try to work out a deal. But what had happened was the union had dra drawn a – it's the Baker's Union – drew a very, very heavy line in the sand, saying we can't give up anything no matter what. And Hostess said, well, wait a minute. If we can't get a little bit of concession, we're going to close Hostess. And you can imagine across the nation, the newspapers, the airwaves were abuzz with, oh, my God, we're going to lose our Twinkies, we're going to lose our Ho-Hos, our Ding Dongs. Wonder Bread. And Wonder Bread. And you know what? Who called whose bluff? The union said, we're not going to give you an inch. And you know what's funny? They're the highest paid uh, group of uh, bakers union in the industry. And so what? They would rather make 18,500 people go out of their employment, walk the picket lines, than give up a small bit of a Twinkie to hostess. Well, as usual, Jim, you've got a little mixed up. Okay, well, why don't you you're tell a little, me what, you're a little what mixed really up. happened then? Okay, it's only 18,500 workers. And so that's only 11. Only? That's in only, this economy? Yeah, it's only 11% of the workers that were, were gained in October. So this is all happening in November. So that's only 11% of a monthly gain for the whole nation, right? So it's only 18,000. Okay. Well, what about and, and the thing is, those 18,000? And, and the thing is, like, uh, in 2012, the hostess gave the union only $31 million in concessions and wages and uh, in health care kind of thing. Only $31 million. Only 31. Only 31 million. Oh. Change. So they're not getting anything from hostess. Hostess is just being corporate, jet, rotten capitalist. Basically, like the teachers' union had this, uh, whatever, the cartoon that, um, you know, kind of taxpayer well, content wait a minute, about wait a how you wait, handle it. Let's, let's hold off on that cartoon. I know which cartoon you're okay, talking wait, wait, about. Wait, wait. The, but basically, you've got uh, these rotten uh, capitalists. Tinkle down <laughs> the, these, It's an 85-year-old company, yeah. and all they've done is exploit oh. these workers. Now, now, the Teamsters had it right. The Teamsters said that you couldn't have Twinkies and Wonder Bread on the same trunk. And why okay. would that? Because it was a concession by hostess. Otherwise, they go on strike. And also, if you're a Teamster, you can't, and you're driving a truck, you can't help unload that truck. you got to bring other people to unload that truck. So the Teamsters had it right. They said, look, we're not going to mix Twinkies with hostesses because they're, maybe they're incompatible materials. might cause some kind of explosion or something like that. Yeah, I didn't realize that the Twinkies were used in uh, bomber vests these mm -hmm. days in the Middle East. How could a <laughs> Twinkie do anything other than Well, apparently, 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 if you mix Wonder Bread with Twinkies, it has some kind of devastating effect. And, and is that to the union because then they can't, then they can't jump <laughs> and then if, the if, if, And a Teamster can't unload a Twinkie or a Wonder Bread. They have to have someone else come and unload it. But you know those Teamsters. So the thing about it is what the, what the and it's not the Baker's Union. You have that wrong. It's actually the Bakery, Confectionery, Tobacco Workers, and Grain <laughs> Millers International. Okay? So yeah, you can't just it. go around and call them Bakers. Okay, so they're not but just Bakers. what do they do for a living? Um, well, they, they could bake. they could be do, they could be tobacco workers. They could be they grain could be millers. There you go. Okay, so anyway, I didn't know Hostess made tobacco. So what this really is is a turf battle between two unions. Right. Okay. Oh wait a minute. Now you're not saying it's not Hostess and the union. It's between two different unions. It's between two different unions because the, the 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 bakers are saying like our cost for baking is not extraordinary. You know we we you know we have some concessions here, one thing or another, but we're not that costly. What's costly is the Teamsters, and they're the ones that are driving. Uh, Hostess out of business. 
Well, wait a minute. Why are the Teamsters? Teamsters are usually the operators of the vehicles. Right, but they're the, ones, so, that, they're the ones that are saying you can't have Wonder Bread in with a Twinkie. You can't but move. why is that? I well, have never because, heard an explanation of that. Because they, that gives more jobs. Oh, wait a minute. Does this mean that they're trying to control the job base of the union? And they're afraid if Hostess allows multiple items on the same truck that you've cut off a job for somebody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, because you got Oh, so you know, silly, a union, a teacher yeah, loses yeah, yeah, a, a truck to drive. So basically it's kind of like, you know, Milton Friedman said. He said is when you had a, he, he was going on, he saw this road project, right? And there's a bunch of guys like who are digging this road with shovels. And he's like, my gosh, you know, um, why don't they just use a bulldozer? It'd be done in a few hours. And he said, well, it's a jobs program. He said, why don't give them spoons? So, you know, they're giving them spoons. You know, that's, it's basically giving them spoons. And uh, so we have more jobs. Wait a minute, is this, this about job, is this about person count on each of the jobs? Yeah. Is this back yeah, to person yeah, yeah. count, right? So anyway, what, what I think is Teamsters paid almost 100000 a year you know, so plus the, benefits? What the bakers are saying, we don't want to carry the Teamsters, right? But they, they don't can't, want to carry the Teamsters. Yeah, they don't want to carry them. They said, like, we would rather. Let the trucks carry the Teamsters. We would rather have hostess go under, go through a bankruptcy, reorganize, or someone else buys it. And then we'll get rehired by the next company. Yeah, but and then, who's to say they're going to get rehired? Well, what if it goes offshore? Okay, now we've got. Uh, so, uh, well, the thing about this is interesting about it. They could always blame it on private equity firms and Bain Capital uh, and saying these greedy guys. The top one percent again. But uh, the thing about it is, but the actual broken record. But the private equity firms that are involved with with Twinkie, guess what? They're all they're all Democrat campaign uh, contributors. So. That doesn't really, but what they don't, they, the, the bakers don't want to look like they're throwing the teamsters on the bus. So this way they can bl blame it on oh, the so private equity. Oh, so wait a minute, wait a minute. So the bakers are blaming hostess when in fact it's the teamsters and the bakers that are having the they're, 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 they're having this, this is a turf war. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense because why is it the media then hasn't covered it from that perspective? They've covered it that it's evil hostess and good union. That, well, why have uh, they brought up the fact that it's two unions against each other? Well, I think they're prejudiced against Twinkies. Uh, no, a lot of people. I don't know if they're prejudiced against I mean, Twinkies. A lot of people don't, don't like. They have to have a bad guy. No, and a lot it of cannot people, be a union. Isn't a lot, that the deal? A, lot, a lot of people don't like Twinkies. You know, they think it's bad for people to have Twinkies, and they think it's all like a Bain Capital. Is this thing. another fat campaign? The fat campaign. Oh, yeah. the, the fat, fat campaign. campaign. Isn't this being run by then? If you want to take it that far, isn't that the the president's wife is running the fat anti-fat campaign? I I don't. I don't. Did she eat Twinkies? I, I don't know anything about them. Do you know Michelle eats Twinkies? I'm not going to get go there. What about Sasha and Malia? Do they eat Twinkies? Are they allowed? Twinkies. Well, they can't. There's no more Twinkies. In the White House? There's no more I Twinkies. know there must be an underground locker of Twinkies in the there's, White House. There's no more you Twinkies. You cannot tell me there's no underground locker of Twinkies in the White House. I know there are. Because well, yeah. I know as soon as this came up, uh, the president immediately, air I understood, mm -hmm. he sent Air Force One to the factory to ensure there'd be <laughs> enough Twinkies, Ho-Hos, Wonder Bread. Mm -hmm. I'm, I do remember this. This was a news flash on CBS by accident. Once, once again, you're completely wrong, Jim. <laughs> completely wrong. And so, okay. Are you sure about that? <laughs> You're completely wrong, yeah. No, I'm sure the White House has the underground locker with the hostess items in it. You so can't it's say anything about no, that. No, it's unfortunate because, you know, Wonder What's Bread. What's unfortunate? It was kind of a. It was kind of an I don't American, have my locker of Twinkies. It was a kind of an American icon, Wonder Bread and Twinkies and Ho Ho. It is an American icon. And it's sad after 85 years that they're going to be, uh, you know, going under. And, uh, you know, but it but is. But is, kind of, is this part of the, the redistribution of the Twinkie wealth? That's been going on for the last four years. Now we're redistributing Twinkies and Ho-Hos offshore. So it's going to be an offshore bundler that gets the, gets the Twinkies and Ho-Hos well, because of the union. Is that what's going on here, Mark? I think that uh, I think it's an incredible uh, opportunity for someone who wants to buy Hostess. I think it is. They, have a, they have a brand name. They have a brand name and they have a profit. And, and it's a well-profited company. Well, and they've been in bankruptcy for a few years. Yeah, but bankruptcy, hey, we know what that means. That means a lot of people are getting paid. I also understand they're, they're setting aside $20 million to pay 19 executives to make sure they wind down Hostess. Right. But th that's a good deal. I think that's the way it should be. I think, I think every company should be able to wind down. But speaking of winding down, aren't we moving to the fiscal cliff? What's our next subject? Well, the fiscal cliff is approaching on January what's 1st. A, what's the fiscal cliff? Well, there is no real, it's really just a misnomer. There's no such thing as a fiscal cliff, really, because really what it is, it's a slow, uh, painful death, really, more than a cliff. A slow, painful death? <laughs> it's more like a is slow, this, painful is death. Some, yeah. Is this Marcus de Sade? Is Marquis de Sade someplace? And we're, being, a, we're being put to death by some kind of weapon? No, it's Some a, heated you know, oil? Or I don't know. What no, are you talking it's not about? Really, what, it, what it is is, okay, so. 
if you have the tax increases, which well, are well, which tax increases? Uh, well, they want they want to do some tax increases. Well, they, who does? They the uh, well, it's kind of been programmed into a. Uh, you talking about sequester? Yeah, it was it was kind of programmed into pre-programmed. It was programmed into something. It was kind of kicking the can down the road once again. Kicking so, the can. Yeah. The Is can. that wait a minute? Who's kicking the can? Uh, the Congress and the executive branch kicked the can down the road. I understand and Congress they said, passed multiple tax bills, but it's always been in the Senate that where the, the Senate Democrats refuse to even bring up the tax bills because they're afraid the Democrats will even vote for them. Isn't that what's going on here? Well, we haven't had a budget for four years, but who needs a Isn't budget? Isn't that Harry Budget, Reed? Budget, smudge it. I mean, who needs a budget? Oh, okay. I understand. <laughs> we haven't had a budget. Oh, we don't need a budget. Okay, but the fiscal cliff means that if you're making $10,000 a year, your taxes, your federal taxes go up 55%. If you're making $25,000 a year, or $15,000, you go up 39%. If you're making $25,000 a year, it goes up 5.5%. $35,000 a year goes up 42%. If you're making $150,000 a year, it goes up 20%. And if you're making a million or more, it's about 24% increase. Well, so I got to wait a minute. Hang on, hang on. Okay, is, okay let's, let's break this down a little bit because there are a wide series of taxes that you're kind of covering there. One is if you allow the Bush tax cuts, which actually 90% uh, of the Bush tax cuts affect the middle class, if you allow those to go away, that and that is what I understand the main focus of the Democrats, allow the Bush tax cuts to go away, and then to increase taxes on the alleged 1%. And it's 2% now. Or 2% or now, or 20 yeah, right. or 100%. Well, isn't right. it true the top 10% pay like 70% of all taxes anyway in the country? Well, I, I think what, what happens... Well, wait a minute. Isn't that true? Isn't that well, like 10% what, what, what happens, pay... There's not that much money in the 2%. You know, so if you're going to increase if you're going to increase revenue, you've got to tax the middle class. That's just the way it goes. Okay, uh, Okay, that's good. Okay, so what but you're you can, effectively... You, you that's can, where the Bush tax cuts actually affect the middle class. Uh, almost 90% of the Bush tax cuts are going to affect... The middle class, whereas that 10% of the Bush tax cuts, uh, those are the evil part. So aren't the Democrats trying to say they want to keep the Bush tax cuts for everybody except the top 10%? Um, it's not really clear. I mean, there's no really such thing as a tax cut. People earn their money. This is a tax increase. Well, no, no. It's allowing t a the tax breaks to, to, be, to go to sunset, and so that the new taxes would go back to the rate, including, including... The payroll tax, which is going to go back because it's been the payroll tax has been cut now for many years. The unemployment tax, that's going to go up. Uh, paying for unemployment is going to go up. I mean, the cost and the people eligible. So these are all new taxes, or I should say new monies, that are related to taxes that are going to just naturally grow out on January 1st unless something is done. Well, there'll be a massive tax increase. And the idea and who will that affect? Well, it affects... Uh, everyone, but mainly the middle class. It won't don't affect anyone that doesn't pay taxes. Uh, well, there are people who aren't paying taxes now who will. I understand there's a 40%, 47% number that allegedly no, don't no, pay any taxes. No, no, but I'm saying that $10,000 a year, they're not paying any, they'll, they'll, they're going to go up quite a bit. There's some people who will go up that they weren't paying any taxes before, and they will pay, for example, if you're, uh, let's see, uh, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. like say if you're a couple and you're making $25,000 a year, used to get a refund of $15, now you'll pay $1,400. So some people who That's are paying, a huge jump. So some people, you know, who weren't paying anything before will now pay more. Wait a minute, so, we're not even, you're not even equating in the Affordable Care Act taxes, the 21 taxes that are going to go in on the Affordable Care Act starting on January 1st. Well, no, you know that the is, IRS is, hired 16,000 new investigators that's a separate, that's just a, for... That's a separate issue, but if okay. you start looking at the overall thing, okay, what they want to do, what the, what the government does. It used to be we had the, you know, it was like, Okay, we had the people, the people had a government, but now the government is kind of its own, it runs on its own. It's got its own momentum, and when the government says, like, how can we afford if we don't raise taxes? Okay, so this is, this is, the, this is the argument. If we, how can the government not afford to raise taxes? Because we need all this money. Well, wait a well, minute. The, the, you the, realize the, raising taxes, the, the, the growth of the national product is going to be suppressed. And I know, understand now we have about 2% growth of the natural income of the company. Well, what the, the analyst I mean, said, this, this would be about a 4 Negative four percent. So if you have a one point five, that splits us down whatever two point five three or whatever. Well, wait a minute. It, but the idea has always been shown. Most economists do believe, and unfortunately, this is contrary to what's being sold to us. Most economists believe if you lower taxes, it generates more income for the government because there are more people willing to invest in new companies, new personnel. But you're missing the new, point entirely. Oh, I'm missing, missing the point. You're missing entirely. the point entirely. Okay. So if you raise no, taxes, no, 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 why no, would no, people no, invest? No, no. Well, but 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 you're missing the point entirely. Let's say you you move. Okay, you want to move 1.6 uh, 
trillion over, right? From, from the private from the private to the government sector, right. right? And then you've also got forty billion a month that you're printing, you know, blah blah blah. So when that comes to four times so you know, you've got a trillion or two there. So really you're moving three or four trillion. Okay, like your gross national products of a trillion or so. So you're moving a couple trillion. You know, basically everything you make is being moved from the private sector into the government sector, which is good because first of all, why the is that good? Because the private sector doesn't know how to spend the money. Oh wait a minute. And okay, the, now we're talking about this is where the yeah. monetary redistribution no, comes no, into no, play. But the oh, I got it. So, so that means all the people that have equity and monies and and the ability to hire people should now just give the money to the government. Well, they're not and giving somehow them. or another, no, all not, those mm. people that don't pay taxes anyway no, no, are not no, going to no, be no, on a not, dole. No, so that not. number is going to go from 47% up to 90%? No, they're not. Where's my dole check? No, the, but they're not giving it to them. That's oh, they're not giving it to them. Well, that's why they have unemployment for no, up to no, 10 but, years no, now? No, no, they're not. No, but the... the the, the, the people who are the tax increase are not giving it to the government. It's being confiscated by the government. There's confiscated? No, they have no choice. Well, but the, okay, but the so point it's is, not being given. It's, it's being, being taken. Con it's being confiscated okay. under a threat of force. You know. So anyway, but what you have is... You under know, a threat of force? Sure. Whose and force? The government's force. Well, I mean, they're going to march in and take my bank? Well, they'll just take you. They'll just take you. <laughs> yeah, so, but the point is, as you move from the private sector, like say you have a, you know, your... your, your, your how many, you know, how much you're making in the in the, the private sector that that funds the government. So right. let's say you're making six trillion dollars a year. Let's say our GDP is like six or seven trillion a year. Costs a trillion and a half to run the government, right? Well, let's say we move like that to four or five or five or six, and so basically everything we make in the private sector goes to the government. That way, the government controls. There's no more real private property because the private property was being well, mishandled. This is the redistribution because no, but the even private if all the richest people in the country gave 100 percent of what they owned, it would not cover the national debt but even you, for 20 days. That's the problem here. But I mean, that's but that's only if you kill them. If you if you but if you take most of what they take all the time, then you can just yeah. But like, why do you work then? Why would you want to work? What's your incentive to work if if 90 percent of your income's taken? Well, what the, is your incentive? What's your choice? What else are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you what your choice is. It's got to have to file a lawsuit against somebody. <laughs> and doesn't that lead into our next subject? Aren't we talking about a uh, major lawsuit was just settled? Who was that with? Okay, so we have Facebook. Facebook. Who, Another lawsuit with Facebook? Know, and they agreed to pony up $20 million. Whoa, they agreed or were they forced to? Well, it was a settlement. The judge approved the settlement. Now, there's some in the plaintiff's you know, that aren't happy with that amount. They want more. Well, obviously, because it's not a not. Facebook being billions and billions of dollars in the market cap, giving away 20, 20 million is like, okay, so fine. We don't go on that holiday vacation with the, the entire cast and crew of Zuckerberg's World of Fame. Okay, so let's move on. So what, what happened? What did they do to get into, the, into a $20 million lawsuit? And so he cut some pocket chains out to pay him off. What happened? Well, federal judge uh, Richard Siebert, Oh, I know Richard yeah, Siebert. He's a been, federal judge. Yeah, I've, I've been in front of him yeah. many times. And he's, a very, a very fair judge who yeah. reads everything. Yeah, he has a great, a, great staff. He is an astute judge, and uh, and in fact, I think when I was before him, he was before he moved up, and it was just he was in San Jose, right? That's and, correct. And then he moved up a couple years yes. ago, and uh, so you know he's a very uh, you know well well thought of judge, very yes. very competent, yes. very fair judge, and and he uh, said, look here, you know. What happens is like names and photos were used online, and the people really didn't give the permission for that. Wait a minute. Okay. I have a Facebook page. I know what you do with Facebook. You load pictures. You load pictures and talk about events of all your Facebook crew. So you say, oh, that's a cute picture. Wow, you're up on a mountaintop. Ha, <laughs> ha, how cute. Oh, your new baby. Now your new baby does this. We know what Facebook is. But you're saying that Facebook was using our pictures we put on there? For some kind of advertising purposes. Well, um, the thing is, they were using Facebook was using uh, people's photographs for commercial benefit without commercial what, benefit for who? For Facebook. For Facebook. All right, right. Wait a minute. How did Facebook make money on the on my <coughs> picture of wearing a lampshade at a ho a Halloween party? I don't understand. How did they make money off of that? That's why Zuckerberg's rich and you're poor. Because oh. <laughs> you don't know the answer to that. This is how he did it. Okay. <laughs> okay. How what, did he do what, it? They, they make a million dollars a day in advertising. That's right? pretty good. That's okay. they need a million dollars okay. a day considering the FCC by, by these, was by telling everyone they misled everyone. Sponsored stories. Yeah. And what happens is when you like something or you do something they kind of attach some advertising on it. And so what people 
seeing that think that you may support the product that's been attached to that. But what if you have no intent to support any product? Product and you have you know there's no compensation for supporting that product and you're instead you're innocently putting pu pictures on Facebook on your page so your friends can look at it but instead they show you looking like you're supporting the latest uh, tobacco. The well, tobacco but, but product. it's just it's kind of going along with that. So but, that so how is Facebook making money off? So that? they say so they they would sort of ads directly into the stream of updates oh. that users see. Um, on their smartphone screen. Oh. So, so they would insert. There was a middle in between the smartphone and your actual computer load up? Well, no, they would just insert some ads there. And like when I say, I, I like Jim Barrett, he went on the mountaintop. I like that photo, right? And they insert an ad along with that. And then it's kind of, it kind of implies that I support whatever that. Oh, that climbing shoe that he might have been wearing right, when right. he climbed yeah, the mountain. So, oh, I got so it. So the thing is, what they said, first of all, they don't have an opportunity to opt out of it. What, whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean they were doing this without telling anyone? Right, you can't opt they out. They were doing this without telling anyone? $20 right. million dollars is not enough. And you, this should be $20 billion. And Facebook should be going down on this one. Are there, aren't there more lawsuits involved with this? How could only $20 million, How could that cover the vast ex, the expanse of all the people that are on Facebook that are having advertisements placed to their names? How could that cover that? Well, anyways. I, what do you I, mean anyways? I, anyway, that's what How this, is $20 million that's, compensate? That, that's what they've came up with. They said they can't opt out, and they're not getting a piece of the action. Oh. They're not getting any remuneration. But they should get a residual from the advertising page that goes along with that picture. Now, what happened is, is this is all part of the new mobile gadgets, and it, it's very, you know, it's a forming thing, and it's very important for Facebook to get everyone's mobile phones because everything's kind of moving to the mobile phones. Yeah, of course. They're not really phones anymore, but no, they're the actually com handheld computers that are communication devices, something so, like Star Trek, but a little more. So they're, so they're, this is the way that they're trying to infiltrate and, and make some infiltrate. money. Infiltrate. Well, they're trying to get into the mobile gadgets. Are you saying that Facebook's trying to infiltrate our lives? I would say they're trying to monetize. Uh, mon monetize our lives. They're trying to monetize the move from computers into mobile gadgets, and this is one of the ways they're doing it. Well, i got a question. What if you really want to make money off of this? Can't you just say to Facebook, well, give me a cut of what you make on this, and that's my residual every time you run that picture with that advertising campaign? Mm -hmm. well, I think that's a fair way. I'd love to get a residual check every, every week from Facebook. That's right. It depends on how many hits you have or impressions. That's right. How many or, hits you have, right. How many impressions you get. Or, okay. And so, you know, that's and, – and so there's some other things going on in the same realm as this, uh, uh, you know, identity kind of sharing and this kind of thing that's upset people. But wait people. a minute. There's one thing we've left out here with, with this is that your picture could be circled around the world with some bogus product and people could be laughing at you at every corner of the earth. Doesn't that affect you at all? Well, they might be laughing at you even if you didn't have that. <laughs> they might be laughing at anyway. Anyway, anyway so I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how that works, but but yeah. So anyway, it's all about the mobile gadgets. Yeah. It's all about inserting these ads, right. and so it's twenty million dollars. It seems like pocket change. It is for, pocket for, change for, for Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, and he says he's making a million dollars a day. So I think he gave his uh, his fiance a ring for twenty million dollars. So that's that's uh, that's not much. But they lost it in the in the. In the <laughs> but but talk about bowl. privacy thing. There's also the, the HP got themselves in trouble. And, and what did HP do? They got in some trouble. Uh, I think they bought. Uh, Wait a minute! Didn't they buy the company Autonomy out yeah, of England? Yeah, autonomy, they used yeah. to have some really high class name. That would have been. Cambridge. Yeah, Cambridge Neuro Cambridge or something like Neuro. that. Cambridge Neuro. And so they were uh, doing, but it turned into autonomy. So a, it must have been, a, it's a, such a nice name, it's got to be worth $10 billion, right? Yeah, so they, they, they were doing fingerprints. They said they could identify a face out of a crowd, and of course... No, that's facial recognition. Right, facial and recognition. And the government loves that because now they can spy on everyone, identify anyone in a crowd so, no so matter you, where so, you go. So you're talking about privacy issues and uh, the same kind of thing. What privacy? And so, you use a smartphone, there's no privacy. So there you go. And so they paid $10 billion for this, but then apparently uh, maybe that was a little overpriced or there was some, some Well, kind of there's more, there. more to the story than just that. What it, what it was is going back to 207, autonomy has been identified by numerous stock traders as cooking the books having effectively a two set of books kind of thing where they would where they show increased increased value for their product by by actually between subsidiaries increasing the value by showing sales that didn't exist and by the time it got well, to they were, whether they were booked or not right yeah whether they were booked, booked properly yeah, or not booked, yeah, yeah. And, and and what happened was didn't, didn't wasn't it Tyco who was doing that who was the, oh that was, was the other yeah that was Tyco the, was doing that actually. Not, was that Tyco or was that the uh, who were the guys the one out, out of Texas Texas, Texas. the guys yeah, out, of Texas, out of Texas, Texas too. the energy company you know, yeah, yeah booked accounts yeah well yeah. the problem with all this is that um, HP had had more than enough data going back five years before they did this purchase showing that there's a chance. 
that these books are not accurate. So when they sent in their due diligence team, because you know HP is trying to grow into the market, they're trying to diversify, they're trying to get a different market cap in a different area because they're not competing at their old standard. So now they're trying to diversify. So they thought autonomy with the facial recognition and, and doing contracts with the government would be a more lucrative cash flow. But the problem was they were in such a hurry. They, were, they needed to get down and do the deal, show their stockholders that yeah, they're running the country well, they paid the 10 billion for autonomy. Well, immediately doing that, and they really figured out what their books were. It showed there was a, the autonomy was worth at least three billion less, and they're taking a write down for that. But the odds are that write down is going to have to increase because I don't believe it's just a third off. It's probably more like a half. And only if their technology is on the front end of facial recognition will that technology even sell. And only if it's cutting edge would it even sell to the government. So they're taking a big chance here. Well, I'm just saying that privacy issues, you know, uh, it's a huge thing now. And you've got like Facebook that's using stuff that people weren't really aware that they're being used. You've got uh, fingerprinting, facial recognition, whatever you want to call it. It's a huge thing right now in people's privacy, all this digital uh, imaging, all the information that's stored. Uh, so it's really uh, very tough for anyone to claim privacy now because as soon as you get on a cell phone, uh, as soon as you, you get on the computer, You've kind of given up privacy rights. Well, I, I will tell you, there just this week, a whistleblower came out from the NSA. Excuse me. Uh, a whistleblower came from the NSA, and he said that literally 100% of emails, texts, and phone calls are being monitored in one fashion or another right now. 100%. Right. And this is a Well, that's why the government's so big. They're very big. Yeah, well, see, <laughs> this is where they're spending all their money. But here's the, here's the thing. So we've given don't, up don't, our don't, privacy. That we, have, a, we have gone that, down the privacy trail it, with the, with the windows kind of a, open, with that, nothing, that, nobody cares. But isn't that a kind of a boring job? Listening? No, <laughs> yeah. what they do is they have computers that pick up certain words and certain right. expressions and things like that. Yeah, when you yeah. talk about things like, I'm wearing an explosive vest. Well, somebody's going to go on your front door and say, where's that burka with the explosive vest? But if you're not doing that, it doesn't matter. But the idea is that this whistleblower is about ready to blow the entire lid off what everyone thought was privacy. But people themselves have given away their privacy. Facebook. Well, then, no, but Every it, time you go to social media he, and tell me that you went out and got stoned, drunk, or doped last, last weekend, you're telling the world that. Well, not only that, anything over a cable network, they can read right off the cable. Oh. I mean, it's like this. You can, you can mean, read anything off Everyone's of... worried about using uh, a landline on a phone. Well, no, that's the best secure That's probably phone. the best. That, no, no. That's copper, probably the best. Copper wire is the most secure. Okay, well, I got to tell you, Mark, this has been so exciting tonight with, the, with these subjects. And I got to tell you, what we do is we have to follow up with Hostess because I believe they're going to be purchased. And I think what we have to do is wish our viewers a Merry Christmas. This is our December show. Merry and Christmas. Merry Christmas to one and all. And all a good night. <laughs>